Thank you for joining us again on the newsroom. These are the stories we are following at this time. The 2023 presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, has congratulated Aliko Dangote at his refinery commenced as his refinery commenced production on Saturday, December 9, 2023. The LP flag bearer hailed Dangote and his entire team at the Dangote Group, saying that the inaugural shipment of the first 1 million barrels of crude to the refinery is a major milestone in the Nigerian energy sector. Obi said the private sector will play a crucial role in the struggle to move the nation from consumption to production. The Osho state government has ordered a full investigation into the alleged food poisoning of 18 students at St. James Primary School B. Owope in Oshogo. Following the incident, Governor Demola Deleke has directed an immediate stop to food cooking under the all meal program in the school. The governor has also ordered the enforcement of food standards and an audit of the oatmeal program structure to prevent similar incidents in the future. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board JAM has announced that candidates taking the direct entry examination will be required to undergo cognitive and verbal reasoning tests. Ishak Oloyode, the registrar, highlighted this upcoming change during a virtual meeting with commissioners of education from the 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory, specifying that it will be implemented starting in 2024. He said the test would comprise verbal, abstract, mechanical and numeric reasoning, data checking and work sampling. On business, the Ministry of Solid Minerals Development has disclosed plans for a prospective partnership with the World Bank aimed at unlocking financial resources and technical assistance to, the, to propel the growth of Nigeria's mining sector. The recent meeting between the Solid Minerals Minister, Dele Alake, and the World Bank Country Director for Nigeria, Shubham Chowdhury, unveiled a positive outlook towards enhancing the development of Nigeria's mineral resources under the current administration. Nigeria's Minister for Power, Debayo Adelabu, says that the Zungeri hydropower plant is 99.8% ready for operations. He said this during a recent session with a joint committee of the Senate and the House of Representatives Committee on Power, chaired by Senator Ainaya Abaribe. During the session, the power minister said the 700 megawatt Zungero hydropower plant will start operating this year after concessionary fees are paid. On the foreign scene, Russians who have been banned from traveling abroad will have to hand over their passports to authorities within five days after being notified, according to a government decree that comes into force on Monday. According to the Russian law, authorities can impose a travel ban on conscripts, employees of the Federal Security Service, FSB, convicts or people who have access to state secrets or information of special importance, among others. The returned passports will be stored by the authorities that issued it, such as the Interior Ministry or the Foreign Ministry authorities. And in sports, one in five players at this year's Women's World Cup were targeted by online abuse. This is according to a study released on Monday by the FIFA by FIFA and the Fifth Pro Global Players Body. The findings emerged from analysis of 5.1 million posts and comments relating to 697 players and coaches taking part in the tournament in Australia and New Zealand. Football's world governing body FIFA in a statement says 152 players received targeted, discriminatory, abusive or threatening messages with nearly 50% of the verified online abuse homophobic, sexual or sexist in nature. That's all on the newsroom. Many thanks for watching.